Hey everyone, today I'm going to be testing out if it's really possible to walk on water. From Leonardo da Vinci, who actually developed plans for shoes that walked across water, all the way to Mr. Beast, who sprayed Ultra Ever Dry on his shoes and tried to walk across water, humans have always been obsessed with trying to walk on water. But why hasn't it happened yet? Why have we not created some device that actually lets us walk on water? Well, I'm gonna show you an experiment today that shows you why it's so hard to walk on water. So for example, let's say I wanted to float this tube in water here. So when I try to put it in, it's inherently unstable. It just tries to tip over. No matter what I do, it just tips over. And the only way to get it to float really is to constrain it on both sides and try to get it to stay there. And even then it likes to tip over, but overall, if I try to let it flow on its own, it just tips over. But let's see what happens when I add some weight to it. So I'm just gonna drop in some lead weights. You can see that when I put in more weight, it's still unstable, but it's getting a little bit more stable the more weight I add. So let's add a little more. little more stable but still wants to tip over do a little bit more now it's stable at least more stable so at this point I'd call it stable meaning that when I try to knock it over it gets pushed back naturally to an equilibrium point you can't tip it over by knocking it so the reason it's able to float now is because in order for something to float stably its center of mass needs to be below its center of buoyancy. And what that means is a center of mass just means where the average weight of the object is. So you can see that most of the weight is right at the bottom of this tube, so its center of mass is about right there. And its center of buoyancy is just the geographical center of everything that's below the water. So its center of buoyancy is about right here. So you can see that the center of mass is clearly below the center of buoyancy and so it floats stably. But what happens if we raise that center of mass? So instead of dropping weights at the bottom, let me add some weights to the top and watch what happens. So now I've gone ahead and added a top to this so I can put the lead weights in at the top and they won't fall to the bottom. So now let's see what happens when I add them to the top. So now when I add just a little bit to the top, it becomes unstable and tips it over. So even though these beads are right in the center, no matter what I do, I can't get it to be stable, even though there's still the weight on the bottom there. So it's not the weight on the bottom that's keeping it stable, but it's actually the location of the center of mass. It's no longer below the center of buoyancy. But there's actually a little bit more to the story than that. If that were the only factor at play, then boats would have a really hard time staying afloat. They'd have to keep everything at the bottom of their boat. But actually it is possible to keep the center of gravity or the center of mass above the center of buoyancy, as long as when it starts to tip, whatever way you start to tip it, the center of buoyancy moves over the same way you're trying to tip it. So you can see in this picture here, when the boat starts to tip over, the center of gravity or the center of mass stays in the exact same location. It doesn't move. But when it does start to tip over, the center of buoyancy does move because that's the center of the object that's in the water. And so the center of buoyancy moves over to the right. And because it moved to the right, the force of buoyancy is up and so it wants to tip it back the other way. And when it tips it back the other way, then the center of buoyancy moves the other way. And so it always wants to ride itself. It always wants to push up and push back the other way to keep it stable. So in that way, when the center of mass, even though it's above the center of buoyancy, it can still stay stable. But that's only possible for a certain angle. Once you get past a certain angle, then it will tip over. But you can see with this example here, I have all of the weight on top but when I put it in the water and try to tip it over, it's still stable. But it's only stable to a certain angle. If I tip it over, over past a certain point, then it's unstable. 
So the reason why we can't use things like boat shoes to walk on water is because our center of mass is above the center of buoyancy. So no matter what, it's always inherently unstable. So you always end up tipping over. If you've ever seen any videos of people trying to use water shoes where they have one of these on each foot and they're trying to walk, they always end up falling over. And even when you can keep yourself stable for a bit, you don't have any friction to propel yourself forward. So you, see, you need some device to push off the water to make yourself move forward at all. So if you can't use water shoes like Leonardo da Vinci dreamed up, what else could you use? Well, would it be possible to use surface tension? Surface tension of water can be quite strong, a lot stronger than you think. Let me show you what I mean. So for example, I have here a mason jar. So first let me fill it up with water. Whoa, look at that. So the water stays in there. Even if I take this pin, you can see it goes in, the water does not come out. But then if you just give it a little shake, it breaks the tension and it falls out. So how is that happening? Well, it was due to water tension, but not in the way you think. So I actually have a screen over the top of this, and this screen allows water to pass through it, but the holes are so close together that the adhesion to the wire and the cohesion with the water can keep it so that it basically just sticks together and doesn't leak out. Unless you give it a shake and break that tension, then it comes out. So this same surface tension that stopped the water from falling out of the jar can also be used to float just regular things like pieces of wire on water. So even though this stainless steel is much more dense than water, it hasn't broken the surface tension of the water so it doesn't sink. But as soon as you break the surface tension, then it drops down. This is the method that insects use to walk on water. They have a substance on their legs that keeps their legs from getting wetted by the water and they can push off the surface tension of the water, kind of like pushing off the surface of a balloon, and they can propel themselves forward and not sink down in the water. But the bigger you are, the less surface area you have per volume, and so there's not enough surface tension to keep your weight afloat in water when you're a human size. So if we can't use boat shoes and we can't use surface tension, then what can we use to walk on water? Well, there are certain lizards nicknamed Jesus lizards that can run across water. And they do that because they run so fast, they slap the water really hard with their big fins and it gives them enough force to push them up above the water. But the problem is that in order to generate that much force, humans would need to run at around 67 miles per hour, which isn't possible. But what if we could just reduce gravity a little bit? So scientists actually studied what it would take for humans to actually be able to walk on water. And what they found was that if we wore flippers and we were on a planet that had a different amount of gravity, then we actually could walk on water. So they found that humans could actually run in place on water if they were wearing flippers, if gravity were around 22% of Earth's gravity. So they did real tests with humans running on water where they reduced the weight of gravity on them so they had them suspended a little bit in the air and they tested if they could run across water. So what this all means that if you were on the moon and there was a pool of water on the moon and you had some flippers, you could run across the water just fine. Hey everybody, thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell to be notified when my latest videos out. Head over to theactionlab.com to get your very own Action Lab subscription box where I send out quarterly experiments to your house and you can do similar experiments that you see me do on my channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.